Howdy folks, Super Koopa here, and welcome to a Super Mario Strikers gameplay commentary. I wanted to talk a little bit today about Nintendo. Nintendo is a company, my history with Nintendo, my background with Nintendo, why I like Nintendo, why I sometimes dislike Nintendo, and my excitement for Mario Strikers Battle League, which is coming up as of the recording of this video next Friday. So, Nintendo... The earliest memories I have of Nintendo were getting a Super Nintendo secondhand from my uh, from my aunt, and ever since then, I fell in love with Nintendo games. Played stuff like Super Mario All Stars, Super Mario World, Zelda: a Link to the Past. There was even a Mahjong game that I can't remember what the title was, but it had a cool intro with a with a dragon. Then there was. There was a fighter jet game that I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it had some sort of acronym, but I looked it up since, and it is exactly what I remember. It had one of the best soundtracks. It was an isometric type of game. It was kind of weird. It wasn't really a simulator so much as it was an arcade sort of Operation Desert Storm-based fighter. And I think it went under a different title in Europe. But those are some of my earliest memories of Nintendo. And then some of my best memories of Nintendo were getting the GameCube when it came out and playing Super Mario Sunshine. It came bundled in with it. It's still my favorite 3D Mario of all time. And I don't understand the hate that that game gets. I really don't. I understand how Flood can feel like a gimmick, and I'm not going to deny that. But I don't feel it's as game-breaking as people say. I feel like there's a lot more limitations in place with it to keep it from going out of control. I also like Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time is... Was it the first... I can't honestly remember if it's the first Zelda I... I think it was. Either Ocarina of Time or A Link Between Worlds were the first Zelda I ever beat. And I know Link Between Worlds is much later on, but that is my favorite 2D Zelda of all time. I'll get back to that in a minute. But Ocarina of Time, I've beaten it multiple times. I've beaten the N64 version, not on the N64, but on um, on the Switch, and on the the uh, Wii, basically virtual console versions. I've beaten those versions. And like most people, I got stuck with the Water Temple the first time I tried it. And it is still frustrating to do, but the, the uh, 3DS version makes it a ton easier. And that's why I play that version more when I do my annual playthrough. See, if a game is really good for me, what I will do is I'll do an annual playthrough, where I'll just start a new file and go through it. Just for fun. And there's only a handful of games I can say that I do that with. Star Fox 64 is one of those. Ocarina of Time is one of those. Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland is one of those, although that one is really short. But it is easily my favorite Kirby game, even though it's just a remake of Kirby's Adventure on the NES. But it's a ton of fun. I mean, I really enjoy it. But those are the Nintendo games in particular that I, from start to finish, go through. If I think it's good enough to go through from start to finish, I'll definitely do that. So some of the things I don't like about Nintendo... Now, I know a lot of people like to complain that Nintendo is, quote, anti-consumer. And there is some truth to that, but I, I definitely think it's misconstrued in some ways. And what I mean is Nintendo going after ROMs and copyright and all these other things, being heavy in their copyright enforcement, I don't necessarily have a problem with that from a legal standpoint. And I know people try to argue that from a moral standpoint it should be okay, because it's how games are preserved. And I would agree with the argument that says that games that Nintendo no longer provides that are first party, that they should absolutely be allowed to just play through emulation. As long as you don't sell them for profit, if you're just 
downloading them for personal play because you want to continue to play the game and you don't have original hardware, that, that makes sense. Because at that point, Nintendo is no longer providing the product. They could probably argue that they're uh, providing an equivalent product, but ultimately that stuff doesn't frustrate me as much. Really, it just... It's, I understand it from a business world standpoint. You gotta, you gotta protect your copyright or you lose it. That's just the sort of thing. I see people complain about it a lot. I see major YouTubers complain about it a lot. It, it doesn't bother me as much as it does other people. It, I, I don't feel like that's as anti-consumer. I think that's just, just business people doing business. And that's an unfortunate reality of business and copyright. And we can argue that copyright needs to be changed. I agree. But that's a, that's a legal argument that needs to be had somewhere else. As it stands right now, people need to understand that Nintendo is aggressive with their copyright, and they will aggressively enforce it. That means that fan projects and fan games really are not in their purview. Yes, some other companies have allowed it, but Nintendo is not one of them. So I'm, I think we need to accept that their legal team is not going to relax on these things, especially because of the difference between how copyright is in Japan versus in America. But one of the things I definitely don't like are when ten Nintendo makes baffling business decisions. I'll give you a recent example. For Mario's 35th anniversary, I believe it was the 35th, they released Super Mario 3D All-Stars as a limited edition release. And it had Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy 1 all in one package. But it was a limited time release. Now, again, that doesn't bother me because if you look at the original Super Mario All-Stars, that also was a limited edition release. And it was a full remaster of the first three NES games and Lost Levels. They ended up re-releasing it a couple times, but most times, up until recently on the Switch Virtual Console, it has been a limited release. So I understand it being an anniversary product, but what bothers me about it is, number one, it's three games that have already been released. They haven't been remastered in any way, shape, or form. They're just made, made available to play on something. For instance, this is the first time Super Mario Sunshine has been available to play off of the GameCube. I mean, that is huge. People were hoping for Wii, and, or rather Wii U, backwards compatibility. I mean, it's backward, it's backwards compatible on older Wiis, like I have the Wii that can play GameCube games. But people were hoping for GameCube games on the Wii U, they're still holding out hope for it on the Switch. I think it's inevitable, but it's just how will they implement it? Will they go Nintendo Online or will they do something else? Anyways. The baffling part about Super Mario 3D All-Stars is how... Not only is it a limited release of games that have no sort of remaster to speak of, but the digital version as well as the physical version are timed releases. And the reason that that is so egregious is, number one, you would think sales-wise, Nintendo would want to sell this game as much as possible. But it also just doesn't make sense because both Galaxy and Sunshine, as of the recording of this video, there's no indication that Nintendo plans to re-release those in any meaningful way. We just don't know because the way that they've been doing the uh, Nintendo Switch Online with Super Nintendo N64 and all of that, they've been drip-feeding it out year after year. It's questionable whether we'll ever see anything like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, or even Wii. There's just no way to tell. So it really is a baffling decision, because it, it essentially makes those games more rare than they have any reason to be. And it encourages emulation, which is something that Nintendo doesn't like. So, it is very strange. They're, they're limiting a consumer to being able to get that. Now, like I said, I understand that it is an anniversary product. But I think that there was a better way to do it where you could get away with a limited release. 
and still allow people to access these games. My initial thinking was they were going to release the game separately directly after for individual purchase. I would have been perfectly okay with that. And have each of them be priced up to what it would cost in the 3D All-Stars collection. But they didn't do that. The only game that got re-released was Super Mario 64 with the uh, N64 Virtual Console. And that's kind of a given that it would be there. So I can only assume that in the future that those other two Mario games will be available. But who knows how long we'll have to wait. And who knows if it's even a guarantee. It's just very weird. Another is, is that whenever they came out with what I would consider a gimmick console, primarily the DS and the Wii, they would emphasize the gimmicks surrounding the control schemes. And it made it very hard for developers to develop games for them. And so they had to develop specialized games for them that didn't do very well, because Nintendo knew how to use the technology. First party Nintendo Studios did a great job for the most part with those games utilizing that. But other studios, it was very hit or miss. Anybody remember the Sonic, Sonic Storybook games on the Wii? Basically, Sonic on Rails. It was very, very awkward to control. I mean, it was fun at times, but it wasn't... It didn't feel natural in any way, shape, or form. So, those are just two examples of things that I'm not a huge fan of with Nintendo doing. There are other examples of things that they do that... I'm not particularly a fan of, but those are things that are just kind of minor. These are things that kind of make me go, from a business perspective, why? I wish I could understand why, what the thinking is behind this. But overall, Nintendo is still my favorite game developer of all time. You can't take away the, the years of fun that they have provided me in some of the, frankly, some of the darkest times of my life and some of the most discouraging times of my life and for that I really do love what the company does I'll admit that in recent years with the switch a lot of their first party titles have sort of missed the mark for me and that's something that's really odd because for most of the generations that I've owned Nintendo the first party games have been just hit after hit but like when Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild came out both of those games to me were not very good I didn't enjoy Odyssey. I felt like it was very empty and kind of soulless, even though it looked beautiful and Mario was fun to move around, it just felt empty. Breath of the Wild, you had weapon durability and stamina limitations, and it felt like I was being held back from really exploring the world. It didn't really make it fun to explore. It made it like, okay, I can't really go where I want to go because everything in areas A, B, and C will kill me. So I really didn't enjoy that, and I'm not looking forward to Breath of the Wild 2 if it's going to be more of the same. It looks like it's going to be, unfortunately. And then uh, the two Mario sports games, Aces and Tennis Aces and Mario Golf Super Rush, they're not bad. But they, they aren't as fun as the GameCube era and Wii era Mario sports titles. There's no Mario Baseball to speak of, but we'll see after after Mario Strikers Battle League what happens which I I did play part of the tutorial for the demo the, the actual demo is going to be tonight and it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun it really does I I think that that's gonna be a real true first party hit that I can get behind so hopefully Na Bandai Namco sees this and goes yeah we want to make a third Mario Baseball I think it's a no-brainer that they should at this point so anyways, that's just sort of my brief history with Nintendo and some of my brief thoughts. I thought I'd put them out there. Really nothing too in-depth, just, uh, you know, just a couple of things here and there, just a couple of small points. I really am excited for Battle League, and I've been uploading a ton of Super Mario Strikers because I love this game. I really think it's one of the best Mario sports games ever made. It just, it's so much fun. There's a level of strategy to it, but also a level of both simplicity and complexity to it that it's hard to explain unless you've actually played it. And I think uh, Battle League is going to do a really good job of carrying that over in its third iteration. Iteration, excuse me. So, that'll do it, folks. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Super Koopa. I will see you next time. God bless. Have a good one.
Peace.